everybody. Welcome back to VCTV from La Token. My name is Sunny Mohanty and I represent La Token in Singapore. And I'm back again to discuss a very interesting topic about um, asset tokenization or tokenization of assets. So it's going to be a very interesting panel because the speakers are very much into this uh, space. And we're going to obviously uh, know a lot that's happening in the space. So without further wasting time, let's just have a quick round of intro of the speakers of the panel today. Hi, everybody. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Hi, Vijay. Hi, Roshan. Sanjay, welcome back. Kushal, welcome back. How's everybody Hi. doing today? Good. Thanks, Thanks, for, Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Oh, very good. Thank you. Great. So before we actually uh went online we're having a bit of discussion about uh where we dialing in from so let's just a uh, quick round of intro and where you're dialing from what company you represent let's start with sanjay sanjay hi how are you so uh, hello uh, good morning good afternoon good evening good night wherever you are I apologize uh, that i may not know everything so but uh, i'm actually i live in new york new jersey and i'm dialing in from miami okay you're dialing from miami yes what's happening there Sanjay, may I ask uh, Well, we have our uh, data 3.0 from that 3.0 session, about six hours. Uh, we got the former SEC commissioner speaking with us. We got, a, you know, that's all our board, and we're broadcasting it live. So if you all want to look at it, let me know, and I'll send you an invite starting 10.45 today. It's about a three-hour session. Ooh, that's interesting. I would and be... Our headquarters are here. Okay, I'd be very much interested. Thank you so much, and welcome back to the Thank you. All right. Next, I have Vijay. Hi, Vijay. Hi. Yeah. Good morning. Hi, Sony. Sony, thanks for having me again. And uh, uh, I, I am uh, I am based in Toronto, Canada, and, and I'm dialing in from my my home office here. Um, so it's, it's it's not as um, as fancy and as warm as Miami, but uh, you know what? Uh, it's it's uh, in Toronto uh, a day where there's no snow, and, and at this time, I think it's it's a good day. So. So great to be here with all of you and, and look to, you know, have a great uh, panel discussion. It, it's one Absolutely. of the best cities in Northern America. Absolutely. I, and, and, and if you haven't bought real estate, you should. There's a lot of FOMO here. So, <laughs> so FOMO is creating a lot of FOMO in Canada. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Vijay, and welcome back. Tushar, how are you? I'm doing good, uh, Sadi. Uh, thank you for having me on the show and uh, always excited to discuss about NFTs and cryptos and blockchain and whatnot, uh, you know, the new world. And uh, uh, thank you to all the other panelists as well. So uh, just as a short intro, uh, I run Consultancy Ventures and we are into uh, all types of funding, whether it is equity funding or uh, crypto funding and uh, the whole thing, man. Very nice. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Lakshmi, Stoshin, hi. How are you? Hi, hi, Sony. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm actually on the road. You know, this is, uh, I was visiting my coffee plantation today. And oh. that's about three hours drive from uh, from Bangalore, where I live. And so I'm just driving back. So I'm, I've just stopped at a, at a place on the on the highway. And so about an hour away from Bangalore, you can see that, you know, for those of you who haven't been to Bangalore or India for a while, the highway dhabas have gotten a little bit of an upgrade wow. nowadays, you know? Wow. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. They're quite the kinda, yeah, this is the equivalent of the dhaba. It's like a highway pit stop, you know? Wow. As you can see, I'm I'm pretty much the only guy here. So, I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm a, a little early, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the party starts later. I, I had a chance to go from Bangalore to Hampi recently. It was an expressway where you could drive at 200 and uh, full yeah, of yeah, yeah. Un unfortunately, yeah. I don't know. I've, I've just got a new car and this thing is beeping at 120, you know. So I don't know. Like, I have to figure out a way to get rid of this shit. I think we just put a governor in it. You're too important for FOHO. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All the insurance folks. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or you got to buy good earbuds and just still drive on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. <laughs> so yeah, great. I mean, we all set with the with the kind of uh, introductions. So basically, Vijay and Roshan uh, represent Coho. They are co-founders. They've been on BCTV before. So today's uh, panel is going to be uh, 
uh, focused on uh, real estate tokenization because they are from that uh, space. However, Sanjay, I know he's been deeply involved in the space as well. So let's start with Sanjay. Well, Sanjay, please tell us, like you've been on the show, uh, I think the last time we were there in the show was, was a long time back. Uh, you were doing many things, but now you, you are focused on uh, Invenium. Uh, the last time we met in Dubai, you were discussing the fantastic things that you were happening, uh, the, the fantastic things that you're doing and the roadmap. So tell us, how are you involved now with this uh, tokenization space? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, listen, I'm still involved at the age of 75. I'm still involved with very a lot of things. Right. I'm not 75, but that's a joke I use. But, uh, you know, with Invenium, let me tell you about. Uh, so we are launching a SPAC, $350 million in energy. So I'm very involved. I'm very involved with Oxford and Stanford. We're creating a conservation studio on ESG and HSBC is putting in about 200 to 400 million dollars there. So I'm very involved with these things. It's all about. But what has attracted me to Invenium is two or three things. We provide proof of value and proof of state of any asset in a real-time basis without really moving the data from the source system. So that in itself becomes very powerful. And Patrick Omara is our CEO. And my, my, goal is, uh, my role is I'm chairman of the advisory board and president international and chief revenue officer. I don't know. My title keeps on changing. But what we do is... We are probably the essential, we are the first of all, the top 10 blockchain patent holders on DeFi and block, uh, blockchain in America. So, you know, I think that's also in India, you know, ahead of MasterCard, IBM and all those guys. But what's more exciting is that we have use cases. We've got an ecosystem that's just amazing. So Cushman, CBRE, all those people are on our, on our, on our, on our, on our platform. And we have now got pressure from all the asset managers to start creating a consulting organization that can advise funds where to invest in blockchain and crypto. So we got Mike Kamansky who, on a board who four years ago, uh, sorry, eight years or 10, 10 years ago, paid four Bitcoin to buy a pizza, right? He wanted to yeah. prove a point, right? He's yeah. the biggest in Bitcoin cash. So, and former SEC commissioner on a board. So we do everything regulatory wise, we do in real assets. We can do, we are doing crypto too on the side, but we do believe that there the full private asset marketplace, which is 600 to 800 trillion dollars, is all wide open for financial inclusivity. So we at Invenium are the, how do I put it? We are the refinitive of private data. That's what we are. We will ensure that private data is available to you to do what you need to do, but it's never moved from the source system. So that's why we call it data 3.0 for, for, uh, for web 3.0. Hmm, interesting. Data 3.0. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Sanjay. Let's move on to Tushar. Uh, yeah, Sunny. So, uh, you know, uh, we have been watching on the sidelines uh, for NFTs, especially with regards to the regulatory overhang here in, in India. Yeah. And uh, the government has said that uh, they'll come out with the uh, guidelines and uh, by the look of it, it seems that, uh, you know, it won't be a, a negative uh, or rather it would be more of, uh, you know, regulating the whole thing in a positive spirit. And, uh, you know, recently we saw Mr. Amitabh Bachchan and Salman Khan launch their NFTs and, uh, uh, and you know, Mr. Bachchan's uh, NFTs, uh, there was some figure being quoted of, uh, I think, uh, close to 10 to 15 million dollar worth of uh, sales, which happened within no time. So that uh, shows the excitement around the whole NFT piece and Kamal Hassan is also launching his NFT. And, uh, uh, and you know, uh, I believe that, uh, you know, there is a huge, uh, 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 there is a huge work which uh, will be done in this space eventually in India in moving uh, a lot of assets uh, digitally online uh, as an NFT or uh, in uh, other ways. And uh, that's the excitement about the whole space. So we are just uh, right now not so much deeply involved, but watching from the sidelines. We get, uh, Tushar, I'm very involved with the Indian, uh, what they're trying to do on this NFT side, on the government side. And you're mm -hmm. absolutely correct. Right. Right. So there was actually uh, the quote which said that it is not illegal. The cryptos are not illegal. And then the RBI stance uh, and uh, the government stance, stance it changed. But, uh, you know, a lot was actually, uh, we were witnessing what China was doing. So so still, you know, the overhang hasn't stopped. Yeah. But uh, 
but the movement is positive so there is a, a right direction in like more than 105 million indians have already invested in cryptos yes so that's not a small number these uh, you know they represent the top uh, purchasing power class of this country and uh, if they are moving in a particular direction then the government has to either regulate it uh, it can't really kill it so yeah, uh, i think the regulation will eventually happen yeah Right. Talking about NFTs, though, obviously they are a different ball game altogether. There's like, lots happening in NFTs all over the world, not only in India, but in the US, in Singapore, everywhere. Like, you know, you hear a new use case in every every sector that you can think of, right? You know, so I was discussing with some someone just before I went live about music royalties on NFTs and stuff like that. Like, you know, there are multiple companies who, are, who put their music on NFTs and I was trying to figure out how different they are, like how unique they are. So yeah, so that's NFT. We can probably touch base uh, later. But today's um, focus is on real estate um, tokenization, and you've joined here with the Jay and Roshan. But before Roshan, I would like to obviously uh, ask you to take us through your journey. Like you obviously own a, a sort of a Airbnb, a sort of equivalent Air Airbnb uh, out of Singapore, right? So take us through yes, the journey yes. that you started off in real estate and and your your progression into into the space of uh, yeah. fractional so, ownership so, of real estate. Yeah, so Sunni, I started uh, in the real estate space in 2010, essentially trying to monetize a few uh, vacation properties that I had inherited, uh, you know, and realized pretty much that there was no real easy way to make uh, money from those properties, and so created a very simple website. For the first one year, it was a free service where people who owned vacation homes could, could just list their properties and then, you know, connect with other people uh, who wanted to stay in them as opposed to staying in a hotel. We were at the right place at the right time. And, you know, this business has grown into yes. one of the world's largest vacation home rental services called Trip Villas. We also, in 2016, uh, decided to enter the property management business where we do on we only manage complexes. So we manage large vacation home complexes. If you see the largest vacation home complexes in India, I think out of the top three, all three are managed by trip pillars. And out of the out of the ones that will become the top three, again, all of those are also managed by trip pillars. This includes projects with uh, the Tata group, Purvankara, uh, the Hiranandani group, et cetera, et cetera. All the largest marquee projects are, are co-branded with trip fillers. Uh, you know, we, we do 360 degree property management, which means we, we, we maintain the property, we do the technical services, we uh, broker the property, resale the property, fit out the property, uh, you know, provide hospitality services, F and B, you know, at the club, um, rental management, uh, rent disbursement, tax filings, they name it. It's a 360 degree on ground property management service, which is very intensive. Um, and, you know, we've always felt that, you know, I mean, of course, uh, we've always felt that, you know, this business has always been the purview of the wealthy, because obviously, you know, we, we, we operate in Asia where pretty much people struggle to buy their first home. And so the person who's looking to buy his vacation home is by definition in the creamy layer of, of Asia. Uh, however, and we always felt that, you know, this needs to change and, you know, it needs to be more democratized. And, you know, as we've started FOHO, we've started also looking for opportunities and we've look, started looking for opportunities of real estate that can perform and provide high yield. And then I'm reminded about why I started Trip Fillers in the first place, because, you know, it's so difficult to find yield beyond yeah. 4%, 5% in plain vanilla residential or commercial real estate. So vacation homes have one of the few assets where you can actually, uh, you know, uh, have create arbitrage or create alpha and, and, you know, and generate yields, which are super above, you know, or at least tending towards the double digits or, you know, which are in the high single digits and can go into the double digit digits with high occupancy. So with FOHO and, you know, we're very shortly going to gonna have the service on November 15th, I would urge everyone to visit letsfoho.com. And essentially what we're doing is we are building a, you know, when you go to a lot of these realtor websites, you know, you kind of sit in India and you window shop or you sit in Singapore and you video shop about all these beautiful properties in Australia or the US or across the globe. Uh, so this is that with a buy button. So it kind of will, I mean, our promise is, you know, we will be, you know, a very pretty 
website with lots of beautiful real estate generating great income across the globe and as opposed to just window shopping you can actually click the buy button and it will be in your metamask or in your wallet within you know 10 seconds you know wow yeah. that's, so that's the that's the inherent promise and that you will see that in action on on november 15th wow very nice question yeah so, so the elevator pitch i'll just i'll just take it on <laughs> for a little from where roshan is for, sure. for less less than ten thousand dollars today yeah. you can't get a a, a broom closet in, in new york where you live um, sanjay or in toronto where i live you can't get a broom closet for ten thousand dollars now, for ten thousand dollars, you could buy one ten thousand of a fraction of a two million dollar New York apartment overlooking Central Park. You can buy one ten thousand of a ski chalet in in Whistler, BC. You can buy one ten thousand of um, a villa in Goa. You can buy one ten thousand of a Palm Jumeirah uh, villa in Dubai. In all of that, in ten thousand dollars, like so. So I think that is is truly democratizing. It's truly making real estate, you know, the global real estate available to somebody in small town India, in 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 in, in small town US. I mean, basically, you don't need to be the privileged, as as Roshan said. And this is not just in Asia. You don't have to be the privileged anywhere in the world to have access to this. We're we're bringing that to people's doorstep, and and we're, we're, we're they just need to click and buy that. So I think that's that's the premise. So yes, sorry, sorry, sorry to interrupt here. No, Vijay, thank you so much for adding that on. I was actually coming to you. So before we uh, deep dive into Foho's uh, business model and how to invest into the platform and what benefits does Foho have for the investors. Uh, I just wanted to know, where did you start this journey? How did you meet Roshan? How did you co-found this company? Okay. Good, good question. So, so um, you know, I, I run a, a software company. That, that's my day job. I started a company called Tangentia. We're now a digital transformation company. Uh, we do a lot of robotic process automation, artificial intelligence. Started that in 2003 in a one-bedroom condominium in, in Toronto. And we're now uh, around 300 plus people globally uh, in US, Canada, and in India. Um, so as we went along, I think something around 2017, I, I also I was doing a lot of angel investing and and you know things that were not connected to to the actual IT business. And um, and then and then uh, we started a company. We started a small venture capital company called Tangentia Ventures. And 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 something that was always on my mind was was how in, in, in North America, you can have a fractional holiday home. Uh, so fractional holiday home was when 10, 12 people got together and bought, a, let's say, a villa in the Hamptons or, or in Muskoka in, in, in the outside of Toronto. And you got you got uh, four weeks in a year, one week in every every every, uh, you know, every season. Uh, you owned one twelfth or one tenth of the property. And 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 you went in. The next guy moved out. So it was like time shares, time sharing with ownership of the underlying property. And 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 I I, I always looked at my parents. They had they had time shares in, in companies in India, Mahindra Timeshare, and some of the others. And and they was always like, hey, Vijay, when are you coming? We got to use this thing, right? Nobody used it. I mean, they, it used to go waste, and and it's very difficult to get out of some of those things, right? So. And you don't have access to the underlying property. So if the property increases in value, you only have right of usage. So we kind of put the two together. And we that was our first avatar of FOHO in 2019. In 2019, we launched in India, Sri Lanka, um, and, and, and we were going to go a couple of other places, was just you know, 10, 12 people owning a property, right? So 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 it was it was and, and where you had usage as well. So then COVID hit. You know, we it kind of went on a little on the back burner. Come to 2021, beginning of the year, you know, we, 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 you know, Roshan did some searching around on fractional. We came up on uh, up there and, and then we, we began to talk and then we, we realized we're, we're kind of wanting to do some of the similar things. We had both uh, dabbled and thought of uh, blockchain, thought of crypto, thought of all these things. Uh, we decided, you know what, we got to put all these together. We spent a couple of months. Thinking of this, you know, it was very 
uh, intense discussions which continued to today and and i think at some point of the day we said you know what we've got enough uh, knowledge in, in the in the in the in the in the technology business knowledge in the in the property management business in the real estate investment business um, you know we we got to put this together there were a couple of things that we were new to we didn't understand crypto as well um, but i think um, uh, you know I, I, I strongly feel and i think roshan believes as well even uh, rockets nothing is rocket science even yeah. rocket science is not rocket science and 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 you know uh, elon musk has proved uh, it proven it to us that rocket science is not rocket science right i mean you can actually send people to the moon not to the moon to the to the, to the space uh, without uh, having nasa scientists uh, on board so so i think that's i think how we did it and so and, and then we went we went ipo ieo in 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 on bit bns uh, on 15th of august uh, you know 2021 which was just a couple of months back the 15th of august was was india's 75th india independence day so as india gained independence we truly believe this is democratization and independence for for property uh, you know the seekers globally you yeah. can there is no more you can you can, anybody can buy property now yeah. obviously you know the, the platform will take care of regulation it will make sure that if you're if you're not an indian citizen you cannot buy agriculture property in india so all of those things will be taken care of right so but other than that it's basically opened it up to every as roshan said um, the equivalent of, of realtor.com uh, realtor.c or any of these sites with a buy button you don't need to have a real estate agent but we do see the real estate agent and other other uh, ma uh, marketplace players also having a place so they will morph into being more uh, you know uh, portfolio managers so, right. so you can, yeah they can tell people okay you know what buy here buy here buy here they can become portfolio managers very similar to uh, a stock portfolio you have a real, real estate portfolio yeah Absolutely. Talking about timeshares, I always, when I go to India, my father would say, it's going to expire, go and use it. And if it's expired, it's expired. You can't e use that. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Sanjay, what's your take about future of asset tokenization? I mean, you know, you said that you were also so, involved in real estate. Yeah. So, I think, uh, listen, uh, I'm, I'm a, I, I went down this journey about four or five years ago. As you know, Sonny, I'm, I'm an advisor to His Highness in UAE, right? And we're creating a marketplace for real estate there. But I've always believed that instead of going all the aspects, the democratization of alpha, I've always believed in that. So how do you achieve that? And I think Vijay and Roshan put it very clearly forward, right? Tokenization is one of the ways to do it. The problem with tokenization I've had is what's the value of that token? What creates value? How do you trade it? How do you do it? So as we go and buy a little bit stake in Tokeny and we are going to list, list the people and Roshan, I'll be in India soon and I know Bangalore very, very well. Uh, we will be tokenizing companies and putting it on LSAG or Euronext, right? So that they can be institutional investors can come in. But what we do is we make sure the token has all the data relating to the property so that it gives complete transparency to the person what that property is, right? And as a result of it, if we also do the valuation every month, which is provided by Pushman, JLL, CBRE, or whoever it is, right? And as a result, someone make a decision. Our goal, our goal is that in about three to four years, or five years, or six years, I mean, with COVID, everything is accelerated. You could be sitting in this conference call, sell a building in UK and buy a building in New York. You'll be able to do that because the value of information, the transparency and the trust of information via blockchain, DeFi, and quality of data at the time of use will be huge. Tokenization is another way where you allow people to participate in an economy. If you look at what Rahul Banerjee has done for bond value, right? He's tokenized the bonds. He's made it available in $1,000 denomination because an ordinary person can't go and buy a $100 million Citibank bond, right? They can buy 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 Singapore dollars or whatever it is, right? And yeah. he's fractionalized it. So this allows people to participate in the economy. I also, I also believe it will bring liquidity. If you look at UAE stance, they're going to double the economy via tokenization. But tokenization falls flat on the floor if there's no value to substantiate what the value uh, is. There's no value to substantiate what it is, right? And that's where we are the data economy underneath it right 
but I do believe that tokenization is there to stay and it's really been for five, seven years. It's not that it's not, not been there, right? And, yeah. and, and it's always been there. It's just that there's a country that has approached us from, uh, from Asia and saying, we've got a stable coin, a stable currency. We've got a currency, right? It's backed by real estate, but no one's buying it. The reason is no one knows what the underlying value of that token uh, value, uh, real estate is, and there's no transparency consistently on a month-to-month -month basis. And just to add, uh, Sony, if I may, just uh, you know, so so securitization, tokenization, you know, all of this is 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 kind of on on the same spectrum. In in 1997, David Bowie uh, launched the Bowie Bond. Okay, so which was uh, you know hundred million dollars of of his assets. So in a way, you know NFT and all of these things are not not really you know that brand new as a concept. It, 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 it's making it simpler. It's, it's making it you know easier. But guess what? We've had you know uh, you know uh, you know uh, instances of this happen as far back as is 1997, right? So 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 it is it is it is something that you know obviously as as uh, Sanjay mentioned, you know uh, you know how does a Bowie bond keep its value? I mean one is you know there is there is the underlying uh, you know uh, you know uh, asset. Are people listening to David Bowie's music, right? I mean so so you know is there is there the royalty in? So those are things I think with with blockchain, a lot of this is now available. You don't have to wait for a, the end of year you know, report or the quarterly report or whatever. It's available and not as much as real time, and 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 people can see that. And um, I think somehow um, you know uh, you know what we have done is we've engaged uh, uh, the concept of a sponsor within the our, our, our thing. So the people like JLL and all of these guys will be sponsors of the core platform. So they right. they will actually vet and bring some of these properties. So they're going to be stand, standing by it as well. So truly a decentralized REIT is what we would call the four platform. So, so some of this is is kind of in there already. But but I think uh, Sanjay kind of put it uh, you know hit it on the head there. Um, but but I think one part of it Sanjay is also going to be you know. Um, uh, uh, through a marketplace, right? I mean, you know, again, if, if, if a centralized party tells you this is the value in today's blockchain construct, in our, in our DeFi construct, mm -hmm. you know, it probably has lesser value than some people that actually use the property, some people in and around there. I think that's where we are going with this. Yeah. We want to make this a marketplace kind of thing. Otherwise, mm -hmm. Centrally, somebody will, some analyst will put together, here is my, uh, what I think. This is the same as the stock market, right? Somebody says, um, you know, Blackstone analyst says, this is yeah. the true value of Tesla. So, what does that matter? Yeah. So, Vijay, Vijay it's, that's not the point. The point is, so we have onboarded BlackRock assets on yeah, our platform, yeah. right? BlackRock, yeah. with that name, they can get the trading done at whatever value they want. Yeah. The problem is people are demanding the transparency on the data that informs the proof of value of that asset. It can yes. trade at whatever trade. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, I want to give an analogy. One of my one of my gifts to my wife was giving her producing rights for Kagaski Kashti, Jagjit Singh. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. But what how do we produce that movie? We got the we, we needed in Indian rupees four crores. Mm -hmm. The producer was going to put two crores, and I got two crores put in 15, 15,000, 15, 15 lakh denominations mm -hmm. to 20 people. But that was a paper. What we are doing is we are talking about, and I, Vijay, I've heard that you said about digital transformation. So I led all of Citibank's digital transformation and delivered $5 billion to the bottom line. My point is we have digitized that process. We made it transparent. We made it tradable. But we believe the absence of data that provides the proof of value of that you can carry on, you can carry on, even NFTs. You're working on a massive NFT with Philip Stark, right? He's one of the biggest designer in the world, right? And he's got about 20,000 artifacts, right? And for each artifact, he gets streaming revenue on it, right? All I'm trying to say is that the following, if you do not substantiate what the value of it is, it doesn't mean that it's trading at that value. The DLOM, the discount because of lack of marketability, DLOM, is about 40 to 50 percent for private assets. Our goal is to reduce it through transparency to 15 to 20 percent, and then let it trade whatever it trades at. 
And that's the point we're trying to make with you. We're not trying to say that no, you no, can't no, open it and no. put it out. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, absolutely. No, I was just, I was just making a little bit of a, a, a counter uh, thing as well in terms of saying that you know, uh, as we get more entities, more, more data points onto the blockchain as well related mm. to the property, right? Specifically, you know, uh, yield, uh, rental, uh, the details, you know, um, any, any, and every, uh, you know, aspect that we can make as transparent as possible to the end user. Uh, all they need to do is uh, query the query the, the 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 blockchain, and they will see everything that's connected to the to the to the property. So that's that's kind of one one area. And second was obviously you know uh, more people uh, talking about it. Yeah, but I, I, absolutely. So DLOM, I learned a new term today, Sanjay. Thank you. <laughs> Same here. I was just I have a very uh, how to put it. I'm quite uh, nervous in that sense. So what Sanjay is saying, uh, the value which is which, uh, that particular asset is traded at, is it? Are you talking about crypto? Or are you talking about uh, the traditional the capital markets, Sanjay? Sorry, uh, I lost. So you. when you so sorry, when you said that uh, you're talking about this asset uh, and the value that is traded at, what are you talking about the crypto? Uh, Asset or traditional? I'm talking about real assets. So crypto, see, so going to real asset, any private private asset, right? Whether it's a private equity, private debt, private credit. In fact, we have been approached by a fund who wants to value the private credit every day so that it can be less collateral. And, and private commercial real estate and residential real estate. The point is, uh, and I'll give you an example, Vijay. By tokenizing, people are able to now stake their tokens because there's a value as collateral yes. mm -hmm. against revenue earning opportunity and make money out of that. Right? That's the protect. That's what we are we're talking about creating DAOs. But DAOs can be only created on real assets. Right? It takes a different capital stack, values it, puts it into a, puts it into a, you know, a, let's put it a smart contract SPV. Right, mm -hmm. and as a result, you can come in and out on the tokenization side. So, that is what we're doing, and I think India, India is going to allow DAOs and everything else. America's allowed it. I mean, it's just shocking that Wisconsin just passed a law on that. America is the most laggard in the world as it relates to all these things. Sorry to say that, but that's the point. Yes, absolutely. Community coming up and voting for a common cause. I think yeah, DAOs are picking up. But yes, but how do you tackle regulations? Uh, either of you, Roshan or Vijay, you can take that because what I understood fractional ownership would be a regulated space, right? When it comes to real estate, how are you going to uh, sort of what are your plans for that? So, I start? mean, uh, real estate, go sure, sure, Sanjay, go ahead, Richard, go ahead, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, so, so, Sony, uh, real estate is already regulated in most parts of the world. So, even in India, for instance, you have the real estate regulatory authority, you have a um, you know, a registrar in every state, you have regulations around who can purchase what class of real estate, and you have regulations around um, the kind of titles and how they are stratified in real estate anyhow. So, so real estate globally will always be heavily regulated because the, the premise of financial independence is owning your own home, and that is central to most governments, you know, being able to enable you know uh, their their population to buy their own home and to afford to buy their own home and uh, various other things around it mm -hmm. so real estate will always be regulated and you know if you try to take a shortcut then that will impact the quality of title of the real estate that you hold so i don't think any player can go around and say that let's do a workaround let's take some shortcut let's not comply with the regulations because you know that will that will cause a deficiency yeah. in title which will impact the value of the real estate that you hold and nobody in their sane mind would want to do that. Right. So, so everybody else will, will in some ways, like, so what we are doing, I'll just give you a sense is we, we use the trust structure and the trust structure is essentially meant for this. It's meant to say that, you know, there's somebody else who's a custodian and the economic benefits of the property flow to the actual beneficiaries through the trust. So we are in as many jurisdictions as possible using the trust structure, which reflects who we actually are and what we do in this process. We are the custodian. We are the trust 
uh, and we are we are not the beneficiaries of the asset or the beneficiaries of the economics of the asset. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you know I would say this: security tokens is not a good way to go. I'll be very honest with you straight away, right? We, that's why we got the ACC commissioner on our board and everything. We will not do anything that is contrary to the regulation. Even in right. UAE, people were talking about utility token. We would not do it. A security is a security. Or anytime you're doing anything in real, in, for real estate, if you're tokenizing and fractionally, that's a security. So we do actually do it as a security. And then we would do a digital representation of the security via token. But the paperwork and the articles of that company or that asset points towards that token as the ultimate holder of this, right? And there are transfer agencies. So the reason we're going with Tokeny and Euronext as part of our ecosystem is, is the reason is very simple. is because the transfer agent ensures the KYC, AML, and everything else, but it ensures that all the people involved in the process are compliant, right? And yeah. if it's an accredited investor, fine. If they're no, not required, they keep a record of it. It's like U.S. investors cannot invest in certain things. Yes. They will keep compliance of it. So you cannot flout, and a lot of people have done it. Binance did it. Binance is on the problem. You cannot, cannot flout the regulation and work around it. It will catch up with you, right? So we have to be very careful. People talk about security token, and I talk about uh, digital representation of a security wire token. That's what I talk about, right? Yes, you can do utility token, but if it's a security, and see the definition of a security. If it's a security, it's a security period. No, you cannot create a utility out of a security. Yeah. So, so on those lines, I mean, you know, we, we've we've done a slight variation or a slight, um, you know, variation of this. We have two tokens. Uh, right. We have we have a, a pure utility token, which is which is like the currency that's used to buy. The security tokens. Yeah. So all our all our properties are are tokenized, and, and, and you know, no doubt um, that we we all agree they're going to be security tokens. And depending on where the asset is, they yeah. will be securitized. Um, you know, following if it's in the U.S. SEC in yeah. Ontario OSC, um, you know, SEBI or whatever, all those guidelines would be taken care of uh, as we as we you know move. Towards the, the 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 security tokens for the enterprise. However, we we have a dual level uh, with also as a almost like a Kickstarter uh, equivalent. Yes. We had we had started off with some utility tokens, yeah. which which can be used to buy the security tokens. So 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 you know, and and that's what we we had the IEO for. So yes. we already have uh, 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 around fifteen thousand. Um, users that have got into the FOA ecosystem via our, our IEO in India, and so so they are ready to buy the the security token. So so we kind of uh, you know did a did a, a dual kind of uh, mode on this, and 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 I think that's that's it, it was more to get um, people that that already understand crypto, that already understand you know tokenization. Uh, on board and 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 you know we're obviously going after the people that are not in the crypto business as well because owning a, a, a fractional real estate um, you know a, a asset and it doesn't have to be you don't have to be a crypto uh, person you can buy it using fiat yeah. you can use it you can buy using anything so 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 we're we're definitely you know looking at it in two ways but I just wanted to make sure that if anybody's listening and you already have Foho coin that Foho coin is truly an utility uh, coin because it is yeah, it, it, yeah. Thank you. so right uh, so uh, very interesting i want to ask uh, either of your ocean vijay so if i were to invest into a property uh, in canada for instance so sitting in singapore so what's the process on foho platform oh it's simple it's as i described it you will see the property on in canada you will see all metadata or information about it so you'll see the Google Maps location. You'll see the valuation report. You'll see, you know, the um, the, the 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 rent yield, uh, which building it's in. You know everything, and then you just click buy. You know you can see that it's composed of, let's say, ten thousand tokens. And so if the property is like a million dollars, it's each token is hundred dollars. Then you add as many tokens as you want into your card. So if you if you're feeling like you know you're a you're a big high roller that day then sony you know just put like thousand of 
or thousand or ten thousand of them into your cart and pay with your Amex, you know, you know, uh, you know, put put the one million on it, and then you have lo and behold, you have the uh, you have the condo in Toronto in your in your MetaMask, you know. Yes. So, a, a quick question. So, do I buy using my fiat currency or four tokens? Anything. Yeah, Anything. you can you can buy using either your FOHO tokens. You can buy using your fiat currency, etc. Uh, there are tokenization fees on the platform, and if you buy using FOHO coins, you essentially get a steep discount on the tokenization fees, which is a material amount. So the tokenization fees are about ten percent of the value of the asset. You get like thirty percent off on that. So it, it's like a three percent discount on a on a property. You know. So uh, another question: Do I can I stake those tokens? Can I trade them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can. You can. In fact, we are shortly gonna allow you to borrow Foho coins to right. buy this token. So it'll be like uh, you know, yeah. So, so yeah, so yeah, so it's so so it'll it'll allow you know, let's say for instance, Sanjay, if he feels that you know, hey, I don't know the Toronto market, but I know that there are smart people there who want to borrow my Foho coins to buy the apartment in in Toronto, and you know, their property is mortgaged to him. And he gets a fixed return of twelve percent, thirteen percent. Then you know you may be able to buy the condo in Toronto for just fifty thousand, hundred thousand down. You know. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and just good. on those on those lines, I think as Sanjay, I think hit it on the head there. Uh, people are looking, and, and uh, you know, and and we have already talked to uh, um, you know people are looking to to find out. The asset, I mean, you know, is it is it doing well? You know, on, on an ongoing basis. So, so we've already talked to banking institutions in in, in North America and in India. A um, lot of mortgage companies, people with money, are willing to 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 lend against property that that's held by ten thousand people. So, right. so, so some of these discussions that we've had, um, you know, initially were. You know, if 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 Sony Mahanti owns an, uh, a condominium uh, or, or or you know a, a villa, yeah. they will yeah. they will give you the money. They'll look at Sony Mahanti's you know income, blah blah blah. They'll also look nice. at the 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 asset itself. They will they will uh, kind of discount it a little bit. They'll give you let's say fifty percent, sixty percent, seventy percent, hundred percent, ninety percent, whatever they they decide. But now what we've told them, if if ten thousand people own this. How does yeah. it matter to you, right? If you are giving the money, your you, you have your collateral is the is the is the is the is the apartment or the villa, and yeah. that apartment or villa is is you only talk to the trust trustee or the one one and you don't have to talk to ten thousand people. So right off the bat, uh, we've got people that said yes. So now this is when this becomes even more exciting, mm -hmm. because if you if you put in the money. Somebody else will come in and put in eighty percent. You can take out eighty percent. I mean, obviously, there could be a margin call if the value of it goes up and down, as as Sanjay mentioned. Yeah. If, if the value of of the property is, you know, you're in a, a hot market and something happens, right? I mean, you're in Miami and and a hurricane hits or something happens and it goes down. So there could be a margin call. Uh, there could be people saying that you know, hey, you only have twenty percent in this, and it's gone down thirty percent. So you got to cough up with the ten. If right. not, you you lose a lose your thing. So that's those are things I think where we're we're still looking at how to 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 bring that element into the platform. But that is the future. The future is you can even get a mortgage on your fraction. Wow. Or That's you can money. stake, or you can stake it, and you can sweep your deposits of a yes. bank yes. to fund that token, and that's Absolutely. what the DAO does. Yes, that's what a DAO does, and that's yes. what we are doing. So we have we have actually patented a lot of these things, and we are already executing on it. In in, in Switzerland, we are doing it. We're doing it with the Mark properties in Dubai, and we are. You could actually stake your Emirates Emirates frequent fire miles. And have a currency account that can be staked to you and earn a five percent yield. So we actually free up liquidity in trapped assets. No, absolutely, That's absolutely. And 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 Sanjay, the the the, the biggest trapped asset is real estate. You yes. know, oh, real that's estate is the most illiquid uh, thing ever. So this this works not just the buyers, the sellers. Everybody that's in the market and already owning real estate, you know, so this is a two-sided marketplace. So 
not just gets new people onto it but if you're on the other side you're already holding real estate this is music to your ears you're like and and you can potentially not exit entirely right if you own a property uh, yeah. you can say I, i i'm only going to securitize i'm only going to sell 40% i i still want to hold 60% I, or i want to hold 25% i'm going to let um, 75% uh, you know go into the market so there's different kinds of uh, opportunity and this is where also well, sometimes there could be people that see value in a in a in, a, in an asset that that as, as sanjay mentioned the um, i forget the term now do do dlom if the do dlom is is 20% there could be situations where the dlom could be negative i mean in the sense there is a premium yes. if somebody actually covets that asset and and goes after it and buys out the token holders so it could be potentially it doesn't have to be negative i mean it could be the other way around i mean positive in sense it could be a premium as well yeah so i think you know just draw analogy to the public markets right yes. this is no different from public markets it's a different instrument digitized because private markets is too big and the way public markets work private markets can't work but if you were to draw an analogy whenever a company gets research coverage the evidence shows that their value in the stock market goes up by 7% 8% because there's transparency of data and uh, people are allowed to make better decisions right mm-hmm. the dlom is all because of da- discount lack of marketability marketability means lack of transparency lack of information about it lack of consistent information lack of periodic information once you solve for those the tokens uh, which is so right could create at an appreciated value at least it sets the foundation and then people yep. can make a decision up and down from it right right because yep. because you're not there's not nothing known as fundamental based data absolutely yeah. i think uh, great discussions i just want to know from roshan roshan what's let's foho is let's foho different from a foho coin or is it up name of the platform you yeah. branded yeah let's let's foho is essentially the the actual place that you buy So Foho right. Coin is the website which is dedicated to the coin itself and you know analysis on the coin and where it's trading what its market value is etc We want to make Foho like a verb so you know you know tomorrow me and Sony are going to we are going to Foho the 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 Burj Khalifa or we are, yes. we are going to let's Foho the you know We're like doing it. the We'll do it. Yeah. No, no, I'm sure. We, I'm no, sure. we are doing it actually. Doing so, it. Yeah, yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You know, so, 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 let'sfoho.com is actually the website that you can go to and actually purchase the real estate using the Foho coin. So, you know, it's uh, as I said, November fifteenth. It's launching. Uh, you will see some, you know, some pretty interesting deals on it, and it'll the deals will get more and more and more and more interesting, attractive, and more global. uh so i mean i invite everyone to check it out and uh sony you in particular we have to find and we have to start hunting for some yeah. good deals in singapore yeah to show our show show the rest of our friends across the globe that you know singapore has also got some interesting real estate you know yeah i mean where are you coming <laughs> ah that's an interesting question now uh, if i if i come there now then you know the the quarantine rules etc yeah. so i'm actually going to be in mauritius soon mm-hmm. so towards uh, you know 24th to the 30th yeah. etc so you know maybe uh, i don't know maybe towards the end of december or january i should be in singapore and hopefully you know they'll they'll ease out the the quarantine rules a little bit I know, then, you know yeah you never know singapore but i'll be there in december but i'm coming from america directly i'm going to uae next week coming back making sure 15 days pass and then i'm going to go to singapore then india and then from, uae from us there, there there is no quarantine from us i know i know yeah, yeah, so yeah. all of you place, all of you are invited to goa at the end of the year so when if you are in 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 oh in, my god yeah, what so, is it yeah. where hey, where is the poho party the poho oh, party you going to have poho party i'm coming i'm coming guys this is the poho yes. high rollers party yeah yes yes in do you know where it is can i send someone in my place yeah. please please do absolutely yes. we will we will let you know we'll let you know it's uh, you know we're uh, I, i always said this okay and then this is uh, one of my regrets uh, the, you know Vijay Mallya uh, had a a bungalow um, a, a, a villa a huge villa it was called the Kingfisher Villa in Kandolim Goa and 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 uh, it went on it went on auction and and you know I and some of my MBA buddies end up in in Goa you know almost every year uh, at the end of the year and and we we wondered 
you know, at that time we wanted it was if there was Foho at that time, huh. we could have all fractionally bought that villa. You know, we we could have you know put our uh, monies together and got a bunch of people. Vijay, Vijay, there's still time. There's still okay. time. The uh, the most iconic residence in Goa, the Palacio Aguada, yes, is yeah. now on sale and Tripulas is holding the mandate. It's okay. a minimum of eighty crores, and it is it is uh, it is the most you know the most luxurious residential asset in Goa. And it's right. not just recently, it's been the same. It's you know, just Google Palacio Aguada, and it's mm -hmm. been the most fantastic residence in Goa for decades. I thought somebody just bought it. I thought it's one of those. Yes, uh, yes. So, yeah. the so Pinky Reddy, who's the daughter yeah, of Pinky Rama, Reddy bought it. yeah, yeah, she, she bought it and mm -hmm. she's put it on the market again. Again, okay, I didn't realize yes, that. Yes, okay. yes, okay, oh, yes, wow. she's put it on the market. Hey, tell her to bring it to Foho. Yes, yes. No, that's that's the intention. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should we should try to understand. We should try to work together as to how we can be yeah. the underlying data layer on your forward thing. Because I'm telling you, I'm getting requests from India. I'm getting requests from UAE and from Singapore Monetary Authority of Singapore. The SPAC I'm launching is with Makara Capital, which is one of the which does the innovation fund for Mass and Temasek. They manage it. Ali is a good friend of mine, and. I, this is a very hot market, and the marketplace we are setting up in UAE will allow institutional investors to look at the asset, have all the data around the asset on a consistent, regular basis, so that they can invest fifty million, hundred million, whatever it is, or they can fractionalize it. Right? Mm -hmm. so that's, right. We should we should talk about it, but we well, are I mean, we should we are looking for, sure for partners in India. I mean, I'm talking to the Bani family. I'm talking to. DLF, all those people there, I know them very well, KP Singh, but uh, mid market yeah. is the right place to go, not anywhere else. Right. right. Oh, happy so to have a our... discussion, Sanjay. Yeah, we are having a year end meeting in Goa. So, uh, we are... Oh, that's great. So, Sanjay is going to fly from US or Dubai, wherever he is. I'll be flying from Singapore and Vijay from Canada. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Nice. I think this should be fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I haven't been to India for a while, like all of, of course uh, for reasons known to all of uh, all of you <laughs> here. But I'm so excited. I hope that things change, like for good. Uh, while coming back to Singapore, I don't have to quarantine myself from India. So let's see. Yeah. yeah, and I I look forward to you know sort of working together with both Sanjay Vijay, Vijay and Roshan. I mean, in whatever way we can work, like we already working with Roshan and Vijay in the sense their token is going to be listed uh, on La Token uh, soon. And obviously, Sanjay has a good uh, proposition as well. So let's close this deal when you meet in Goa. And I'm very excited. I've been to Goa. Like, it's been over many years now. And I am st still haven't come out of that euphoria of Goa. Like, I went during New Year's, like December, New Year party. I was literally partying over there. And I still cannot forget that the experience. Uh, and I'm looking forward, very much excited to go back to Goa <laughs> during that time. <laughs> Uh, Sonia, I don't know how old you are, but I think a lot of us who are at that age group remember being in Goa on the 99 to 2000 transition New Year. You know? Well, what do you think? How old I am? You can obviously take roughly, a guess. Roughly around. 23. You, you, you seem to be a little younger than to to yeah to be to be uh, to be have to have been at that New Year party. You know, might have still been under the guardianship of your parents. <laughs> 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 oh gosh all right great it was a great uh, panel today on bctv after a while i really thoroughly enjoyed it um let's take some quick closing thoughts before we close the session uh sanjay over to you god she always goes to me first right so uh so <laughs> it's good that sony always remembers me first right it's always a pleasure to do that so listen i think I'll say a few comments. Tokenization is going to happen. It is happening. It will be the mainstream for how funds and VCs even raise money because the liquidity remains with people in the mid-market side, right? Number one. Number two, I believe that the valuation, that the transfer, that the data has to be connected to these assets, no matter what, right? So that there's transparency and trust on the information. So immutability. DeFi is going to be critical because data private asset people don't like the data to be moved out. They like it to be presented so that someone can do something about you know creating valuation or something and put it back, right? Yeah. yeah. So that is very 
the, the DeFi is going to be very critical. The use of blockchain will be very important. We are also launching our own protocol, Accumulate, which is going live, right? And we are not creating our own token, we are interoperable. So you can hold a wallet on Accumulate, but it can be, and it doesn't ma matter whether it's ERC or anything, we're interoperable with all the blockchain. So it, so we are making things transparent. We are we're basically the pipe and the infrastructure supporting the private asset market. So I do believe that this is going to happen. It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. I think in the digital age and the COVID age, this has all been accelerated. What would happen in 2027, 2028 is going to happen in 2022, 2023. That's the point, that's the bottom line. And the hunger for alpha, democratization of alpha and financial inclusivity. I'll be speaking at the Dubai Expo uh, next month, uh, this month, right? This is November, right? This yeah. month. And we'll be talking about financial inclusivity. And financial inclusivity is not only about diversity, but it's also giving people access to alpha generating opportunities without really getting them to stake their life earned incomes around it, right? So yeah. that's what I believe is going to happen. So you, you Vijay and Roshan are in the right place. And I and I think we lost Tushar. I don't know what happened to Tushar, but anyway. Uh, I think he just uh, wrote a message saying that he had a hard stop. So. Yeah. Okay. I have a hard stop in about three minutes too. So uh, we have got a con conference coming up. We are nearly, nearly done. Uh, Vijay, very quickly with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I think uh, any of you watching, um, we, we've heard from from the wise people here. Uh, Sanjay has um, you know, told you if, if you're sitting on your money, if it's under the pillow, if it's any of those places, you get it out there. You know, um, and I'm going to add this, um, you know, November 15th. There's going to be a very good place for you to pump your money. Uh, let's um, and 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 if you want to prepare for for you know you can also go to fohocoin.com. You can buy it on BitBNS, on Uniswap, uh, and very soon on La Token. So so there's multiple ways you can participate in in the Foho ecosystem. And 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 if you are uh, one of those people that have already invested in real estate. And wondering, this is so illiquid. Uh, get in touch with uh, Foho as well. We can Foho your real estate. We can bring it on and and tokenize it and and get you some some money coming in. So this works That's for both or people. People already in real estate. People wanting to get in as well. All right. So I'm going to bring my properties on it in India. Sanjay, absolutely, be a pleasure. It would really uh, so you know, so so. Roshan, let me know what you can do for Bani properties. B A A N I. We're going to tokenize that pro uh, Gurgaon properties. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know all those guys very well. They want to work with us, but again, we're going to go through the valuation and everything else. So we are going to have partners yeah. in India, and we can figure out how, how we go about doing it. Right. I don't want yeah. partners who yeah. don't understand the business. Right. I I got you know Birla's yeah. family. I know all these guys very very well. Sanjeev going as a personal friend of mine, but they don't understand what it is. Right. So. Okay. So Sanjay, um, we, we, we like to like to see how we can get you on board, uh, I mean, you you we have the as I said the sponsor thing. We need we need market participants. We need people either sellers, you know, you know, enablers, and so we, we need we need all of that. And I think as we get this, you know, the, a floating tide, you know, so a rising tide floats all boats. I think everybody in this ecosystem will gain. So uh, it would be wonderful and fantastic if we can we can we can partner. And thanks, Sony, for putting. This <laughs> great i uh, really i like this panel thank you so much yeah. uh vijay and uh, thank, sanjay uh, thank, Roshan, two thoughts thank, thank you sony for uh for doing this i'll uh, keep it really brief i finally enjoyed actually doing this from on the highway in india and for those of you who have who have not been doing a stream yard or a live session from the from the highway i highly recommend the musk melon <laughs> juice it's not something that you can normally get in any five star hotels but you know they have it on the on the highways and it's really yummy you know so thank you la token and sony for having us and thank you for the opportunity to have a musk melon juice you know <laughs> thank you guys thank you roshan and vijay all i almost pick you every day and i'm, I'm very much personally excited about your project and the success of your project it's yeah fantastic... sometimes i i you're picking me from so many from so many the messages sunny I, i'm i'm confused sometimes which is the real sunny you know like <laughs> Well, at yes. least you won't call you at two in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, Sanjay, sorry about that. You know what? Oh, I have. But my wife curious who this person is. 
Oh, <laughs> and oh I said, God. and I said, Sunny is a short name for Surinda. <laughs> Sorry, when I have a panel like, coming up, I get too excited and I can't sleep. So Don't I get excited. Sunny, we are professionals. When we say yes, we do it. I know, Sunny, but you know, it's just me. <laughs> I know. Thank, you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sanjay, Vijay, and Roshan. Had a great yeah. uh, time Bye. on this panel. And yes, Thank we are going to talk so soon. Thank you. And see you in Goa. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.